Last few years I have always struggled with many of the man-made descriptions for phenomena I had been trying to explain for whole of my life. And the reason is that I don't like um, to put anything into a box. I don't like to limit something. I don't like to give anything too broad of a meaning where it opens doors for others to come in and claim that they also experience a certain phenomena, which they usually don't. And also, of course, there is also trickery. There's a lot of trickery out there where people want to use the umbrella of psychic phenomena. It's the same like pseudoscience. Pseudoscience is a term that we use for something that's not proven yet, but may be proven within two years, and also something that is just complete hogwash, quackery. So how can we allow something that is very real in our lives to be cheapened? How can we settle for a terminology that doesn't do it justice? You see, language is only an attempt to communicate. It's a good attempt. Some languages are more suited for intuitive conversations than others. But overall, none gets it right. Once in a while, I read a word from the ancient Greek, Latin, and uh, I say, mm, he old he ancient old Hebrew. Um, wow, they got it pretty. Wow, this makes sense. This is pretty. You know, wow, this is better than what the modern languages are using to describe it. Sometimes you see it's kind of like when I make videos and I realize that on one of these videos it's uh, I sound is bad or uh, you know my, 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 my phone was full and it just cut off too early and this and that. I say, oh God, I make another one. And you know what will happen? Every single time I delete it. I said, no, I'm going to post it the way it was. You know why? Because my energy was right the first time. My energy is right when I say I have to go online right now. I have to make a video. And it's always like that, that I have it always ready, somewhat ready to where I can go on. And it doesn't matter if I have a title or not. And, and the funny thing is, you know, I would love to not have a title at all. You see, I think I'm not bad with titles whatsoever. But I also know that a title will limit a video, right? A title will be, okay, I'm going to talk about clear cognizance today. But I'm talking about other things too. And so it's actually more important to me to grow uh, subscribers. And then whenever you guys, you know, anybody just has downtime and listens to Gilbert's colossal podcast, by the way, the one with Chevy Chase was pretty damn good. Really, really good. Um, and a sport with the Jeff Ross one. Just, oh, hey, Mike has a new video. I'm arch negative. He said a couple of things here and there. And again, I want to also mention that, you know, I'm going to make more and more. Uh, whenever I see a good comment, and I'm sorry if I haven't posted these videos yet because I had done others before that I kind of want to get out there first. But um, I want to make sure we don't need to box ourselves in. I'm getting better, I believe. I think I'm getting more to the point where I don't care anymore. You understand what I mean? It's been 10 years on YouTube. And I say things now, I kind of go back to how it was in the beginning when there was absolutely no YouTuber. I was like the first one, the only one. And it's funny how people imitate and how people, you know, something they think is very 
revolutionary that I've done many years ago. But some of you remember, some of you don't. Some of you are new. Others have said, how can it be that I have never seen your channel before? Well, I ask YouTube. I don't know. What do you think? Well, clear cognizance is a term that really hit home for me for the first time. It was really for the first time uh, until I, I learned about empathy, what empathy really is. Because I, I, I heard the term, you see, it's, it's, it's really bad when, you, uh, when a term gets introduced to you in the wrong manner. It never really leaves your brain, right? And people say, you have no empathy, you need to donate to these people. And it's like a total, you know, like a corrupt NGO. You know, I love the William Shatner Twitter account, by the way, where he is like, somebody made a, somebody from some autism organization, you know, kept, he, he was like, no, no, I have my own organization, my own NGO, and I have a list of those I trust. And he's like, okay, let me let, look at yours. He has the tax report or the... He's like, wow, 100% of your donations, you pay yourselves in salary. Where's the money going? You know what I mean? That's what I love when you... you if we don't have real people in our lives, at least limit who you follow and who you read to those who show you something that's real. And Twitter and uh, Instagram and, you know, all of these channels can actually do that. But it's up to you whom you follow, you see. I always wonder about people say, oh, there's so much crap on Facebook and Twitter. It's so what? Take some responsibility. Whom do you follow? You know, somebody posts a nice meme. Yeah, like, oh, that's cool. And then the next thing, they retweet and retweet and retweet some stuff that's just complete nonsense. So, you know, I always hate it when people come back to me, right? When they go out and they say, oh, now I'm back with you. Oh, thanks a lot. Why did you leave in the beginning? Why don't you contribute? Why don't you give me some ideas what I can do to make things better? And that's what I'm doing when I'm getting some of these comments. And I've had a few recently. I think I uh, need to, I need inspiration and I'm sorry that I was late. I had to uh, approve a, new, a few new ones. I have many, many comments, by the way, many comments on my channel. I mean, on my uh, blog, on YouTube, not that many. It's getting more. And uh, I don't even want to look at it, man. I don't even want to, but I get beautiful comments. And it's a full-time job to look through all of the comments to find the good ones. Believe me, it is a full-time job, man. You guys have no idea. So I appreciate everybody who's actually there with me and still listening. Because, the, you know, you, you can go to all of the alien channels, but you don't find any channel like mine. You know why? Because it takes a lot of work. Because I have... 80% nonsense. My mother is positive. Miscarriages, yeah. Are you an RH negative mother with an RH positive mother? Of course I'm asking that because I'm wondering if in pregnancies, you know, when the blood mixes, an RH negative fetus can also <coughs> already uh, have developing antibodies in the womb. Meaning that you're a female, if you're a female, by the time that you get pregnant, you already have the antibodies. So people say, well, you know, after, I don't know, the policy is different in every country. But I keep reading about miscarriages. By the way, this is for entertainment purposes only. I miscarried two times prior to my daughter being born. I did have issues with both of my two live birth pregnancies that involved the placenta trying to tear away and abort. I also received the role, uh, the, I'm not mentioning any products. I re also received the shot, the shot, not tequila, after my second miscarriage and also at the 20 week mark with both live pregnancies. Both my children are arch negative. Okay, well, yeah, yeah, you know, you. this is different, of course. Her husband is O positive though. 
So of course, in some countries they give you the sh the shot no matter what. You can see my husband's arch negative, well, or arch positive. Well, in her case, he's positive, but they, you know, my husband is positive. Pregnancy seemed to be hard for me. I could get pregnant very easily, but struggled every time to remain pregnant. That's a good one. You know, it's it's. It, Jewish blood types. Oh, I was attacked with that. Jesus Christ, man! You people, some of you, some of those, some of you people, not you watching, but some of you people who may watch. I said, please leave me alone with your anti-Semitic talk and all of your hate speech and your, you know. And, and, and by the way, right now it's always a big thing about no hate speech, no hate speech. But you know what that generates? It makes people even more hateful. You know what I mean? It makes people occupied with, you know, why you talk about Jews? Are you a Jew? Are you this? Are you that? I mean, you people need to get yourself out of the last century for real. You know, some evil talk, man, that I'm encountering attacks for looking up. And by the way, when it comes to ancient Hebrews, I have not yet made a connection other than our cousins, the Bedouins in the Sinai Peninsula. Cousins, I mean paternal line. Very close. They are high in large negatives. 30% or something like that. So, Ancient Hebrews, what were their blood types? You know, don't look at Ashkenazi Jews these days, but what about back then? That's the question. Sephardics, some, some Sephardic groups are high, but we don't know. From the Berbers, Basques, you know, they went the other route and mixed. It's very good to <coughs> have certain points to trace things back. I love to trace things back, even if it doesn't give me a clear answer. Because, um, you know, it seems like a lot of scientists, they're just making things up and fill in the, filling in the blanks. They fill them in well, but they fill in the blanks, you know? So I'm still with the Basques. These are still, that's still my group. I mean, the empty DNA K and J, that's uh, ancient Hebrew line right there. The K especially, you know what I mean? So uh, there is a connection that we need to sort of uh, keep an eye on. And we need to remember that one group passes it to the other. While one group, it gets lower, the Rh negative frequencies get lower. The ones they mix with, it gets higher. It goes like this, you know. And I want to also mention again that in northern Spain, in um, Cantabria and other places, Catalonia, everywhere it's high in Rh negative blood. So, and those were Celtic, some of those were the Celtic tribes. You know, the Proto-Celts, they invaded the Basques, the Proto-Basques, but they also settled in other regions. And so um, that's obviously very interesting, right? I mean, the Celtic connection, but let's, the Basques came long before that, the Proto-Basques, long before that. I cannot find anything specific, so let me get to clear cognizance. I don't like when people, you know, clear sentence, well, clear sentence is well, fine, but... Uh, Clear audience, clear voyance, clear see No, 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 it's not my eyes. When my eyes are a tool that helps, all of my senses get activated. When I talk with somebody, when I meet somebody, all of my senses sort of are there, you know? And it doesn't matter so much what people tell me about a person. Oh, this guy, this, this guy. This. You know, when I was younger, I think I, I paid a lot of attention to that. People already told me, oh, this guy is like that, this guy is like that. I'm like, okay, well, really. But now it's kind of like, wow, okay, let me see for myself, all right? I don't, I'm like, I realize, you know, when too many people are full of it, after a while you're like, mm, yeah, okay, whatever, you know, just, uh, it's hard to always be silent, man. But I realize intuitive people, empath, we don't argue, we don't like it. It's just, and they... Who stay? The general population, people love to argue. I couldn't believe it when years ago and again and again, people are 
Like, well, let's get into a debate. I said, I'm like, I hear it was debating. I know intuitively what it is. I know already. All your words will do is delay me. You know what I mean? When people say, let me talk to you about it. No, 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 no. Don't say, let me talk to you about this. You say, your point right now. You don't deserve my attention. You understand? The only thing that's going on right now, everywhere you look, in the news, everywhere, people getting confused. People allow themselves to be confused. Most people don't recognize when they're being confused. They're not connected to who they are. And the other thing is about paranoia. People say, oh, you're paranoid. You're paranoid. Really? I can tell you something. An intuitive person will always be seen as paranoid here and there by non-intuitives until shit hits the fan then they still don't want to admit maybe that you're right, you are right, but they listen to you the next time. You see, they don't like anybody else to sort of, to acknowledge anybody having something they don't or knowing something, but they will be humbled enough to where, okay, like a sheep that's scared, like when the, um, or when, when you fire a gun in the air and then suddenly everybody in a saloon goes down, they're, okay, okay, then. You know, that kind of stuff. I am ARH negative. Both my parents were RH positive. My brother is RH positive. I know blood type. I had no antibody before. Okay. <clears throat> Miscarry possibly miscarried one of twins. Mother RH positive. Healthy RH negative child born. Just the one first child. Second positive. Had no idea was pregnant at the third 23 weeks. I had miscarried twin 15 weeks earlier, so didn't question lack of uh, anemic, strong and sometimes so crowd cravings, easy pregnancies. Well, anemia, I always tell you guys, listen, uh, you know, I, I always take it back to the ocean where, you know, oxygen supply is good and the foods that we eat, that's not what our arch negative ancestors ate. You know, the deficiency of these minerals and nutrients is responsible for much of our ailments, you know. And uh, I can tell you guys, if it's... Um, do you eat what you like to eat, by the way? How are your eating habits? Let's make this video about that. I would love to know from you guys. What are your eating habits like? What do you eat? What did you eat yesterday? What did you eat today? What did you buy for the rest of the week? How did you feel after your meals yesterday? And be honest, think about that. Breakfast, did you eat a big breakfast? Breakfast is the best meal of the day, right? Most important? Uh, a cornflakes company, is it a trademark? Well, a cereal company invented that slogan. Crazy, huh? Not your doctor. Not the uh, general uh, whatever. No. Not the president. Not the queen. A cereal company came up with that slogan. I don't like to eat in the morning, honestly. I like coffee. I like coffee to make up for my lack of sleep, which is not a good thing. I'm pretty sure that if I was more balanced and not as nocturnal or I lived a life according to my inner schedule, I don't think that coffee, I would crave it too much, you know? And with coffee comes the cravings for other things that are unhealthy. One goes to, and maybe natural coffee, yeah, it's probably good. I'm drinking that cheap stuff, right? I have no option here, right now where I live. It's not a coffee country, you know, 7-Eleven, 7-Eleven, positive, sorry, I mean supermarket, instant, coffee, coffee. Um, look, I don't like to eat in the morning, I guess uh, if it's bacon and, and, and eggs and stuff, yeah, I guess I am, but bacon, man, look up, look up the, the health Risks, I mean, at least buy turkey bacon or something. I think uh, that's a much better thing. How do you feel after your breakfast? You're, re you're ready to go back to sleep, right? Or are you ready to work and go for it? 
I hate eating in the morning. I can't eat in the morning. Unless it's like a real big thing and then I want to go back to sleep. Unless it's, you know, oh my God, bacon and eggs and all that stuff. Wow. Amazing. Yeah, I like it, but then I want to sleep. So is that a good thing? How did our ancestors eat? They didn't have, did they have, did the Neanderthals? Not that they were necessarily our ancestors, but well, yes, they were our ancestors. You know, I have seen that many Irish negative people have very high Neanderthal DNA percentages. So yes, Neanderthals were our ancestors. So let's go, regardless of their blood types, let's go for it. What did they eat? Three times a day? They had certain, they had eggs and bacon and then they had, no, they eat whenever they had something. And they saved some for the morning or the next day or they, they preserved it, whatever they did. And then they always had something, they always had something. And when you eat, you eat. It's gonna get rotten, eat as much as you can. No, don't go out there and, and we have a moose, we have a, a what we call these things, a mammoth. You have a mammoth. Let's eat as much as we can. Let's keep on eating. Let's do, you know, that's all we have. And then, you know, I don't know, did they preserve their food? It's a good question. They were in small groups, so they didn't give it to their neighbors because the next group was like many, many miles away. So anyway, Claire Gnogginson's, I've talked about that. What did you, what kind of, how, think about the last seven meals you had and tell me how you felt after each one of them. 